So what is a neural net? How does it work? Is it actually sentient? There are a lot of phrases being thrown around that make people wonder if we already have sentient computers. So let's talk about exactly how artificial intelligence works. Let's get into it. So what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is the development of computer systems that can perform tasks which usually require human intelligence, like visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, that kind of thing. So how does it work? Well, we're going to have to start with a neural net. You can think of a neural net as a gigantic set of data points. Let's start with an example. Let's say we want to create an artificial intelligence that will figure out if a picture contains a vertical line or a horizontal line. Say it's a 3x3 three three grid of pixels. Start simple. We feed a picture into the neural net and it spits out one of two options, horizontal or vertical. So what we're going to want to do is take that picture and break it down by pixel. We assign each pixel a number between 0 and 1. It'll correspond to the pixel's brightness. So if the picture is 3 by 3, that's a total of 9 pixels. So we assign each one to its own quote unquote neuron or data point in the network. So these data points that holds the pixel's brightness don't just store a value. They also have a few other data points. It's actually a big function, which takes in values and spits out other values. It uses an algorithm to decide what spit out the other side. So the neural net looks like this. It's split up into layers. The first layer contains the values for each pixel in the picture that we just fed into it. And based on how bright each pixel is, and a number of other factors, it'll add a value to neurons in the next layer. So if, say, the top three pixels in the first layer are lit up, the calculation in each of them makes neuron number two really bright, but doesn't add anything to neuron number three in the second layer. And if neuron number one and number two are lit up in the second layer, it makes neuron number four light up in the third layer. It works the same way with layer three and four. Layer four is called the decision layer. We have two data points in that layer. In this case, one means vertical and the other means horizontal. A combination of an algorithm and some extra variables called weights and biases in each data point determines which neuron neurons are lit up in each layer. So that's the general structure of a neural net. Now here's the main question. How do we get it to give us the correct answer when we feed in a picture? How do we get the neural net to recognize a vertical line versus a horizontal line? That entirely depends on the variables in each neuron. The ones I mentioned earlier, the weights and biases. We can basically change those numbers to be anything we want. Eventually, if we tweak the numbers in each neuron to be a specific number, the neural net will recognize any pattern we want it to faces, lines, handwriting, whatever. It's just a matter of getting the values to be exactly right. So how do we tweak those values to make it so it gives us the correct answer in the decision layer? There's another algorithm we can use that'll tell us exactly which neurons we want to change to make it more accurate. And it'll even tell us if we should raise or lower those numbers, and how important each specific neuron is to the process. So what we have is essentially a student, the neural net, and a teacher, or the algorithm that goes around deciding which neurons to modify. So we send a picture through the neural net and use the teacher algorithm to analyze what it spits out. Then we tweak the numbers in some specific neurons and send another through over and over again, thousands of times, millions of times even. It's a very long, drawn-out process, and in the end, we really don't know how the neural net is processing the data to give us the decision on the other end. We know how we programmed the neural net. We know which connections the neurons made. We know how the teacher modified the weights and biases, and we even know why the teacher modified each individual weight and bias. But we don't really know why different connections are made. There are some very smart people at Google's DeepMind project, and other AI engineering companies who have a pretty good understanding of it. Anyways, at that point, we take the neural net with its pre-programmed weights and biases, and we put it into production. YouTube has a neural net that analyzes thumbnails, for example. One of these days, I'll talk about how YouTube works. It's very fascinating, and it involves a neural net for just about everything. But that's for another time. So that's how a neural net is built. But it's very specific technology. So it's fantastic at telling the difference between a vertical line and a horizontal line, or to detecting fraudulent transactions for a bank, or faces in a picture, but they aren't really built for all of those things at once. The neural nets, at least so far, are designed for very specific purposes. It's a booming industry right now, so that 
might change in the near future. And honestly, the description I just gave you of how a neural net works is very basic and primitive. That's the kind of methodology they've been using since the 90s. Now we have much more advanced systems that do much more advanced things. But here's the bottom line. There's nothing supernatural or alive about it. It's just a bunch of mathematical functions that take in a number or a set of numbers and spit out another number. I don't want to discount the possibility that there might come a time in the future when it's more than just a set of functions. Because if or when that time comes, I'll be the first to accept it as a member of society. But as of this moment, as far as I know, it's just a set of mathematical functions. There's no sentience to it. Nothing to fear. Now that seems obvious to some people, but it isn't obvious to others, so I felt like it should be said. I remember when I was young and working with the language C, people were going nuts about the word dynamic. They finally managed to make a program dynamic. It was a big deal. Software is no longer static. They'd created this function called malloc that let you allocate memory while the program was running. So under certain conditions, you could allocate a new block of memory and store stuff in it. Suddenly, you didn't have to set a cap on how many connections came into the server and allocate that memory before the program even started. You could request the chunks as connections happened. It seems so insignificant, but it was a big deal at the time. And now the big deal is machine learning. It sounds like a scary term, like the computer's alive and picking up social cues and preparing to take over the world. In reality, it's just a technical term for a breakthrough in technology. It seems like a scary term to the public, but there's really nothing to be afraid of. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Follow me on Discord, Patreon, and all social media. An explanation of how YouTube works is soon to come. Thanks for watching, guys.